All right, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. Today we are talking about Nebula. So this is our general Nebula overview or primer, however you want to describe it. Um, so we're just going to sort of go through and go over Nebula, explain it to you, what it's supposed to do, the features and functions that it has. So to begin with, we'll start with what is Nebula. So Nebula was the first full stack cloud networking solution for SMB. Um, you may remember at the time it used to only be Meraki and I want to say Aerohive, uh, who were primarily focused at that time only on the enterprise market. So we decided we wanted to take that sort of functionality and feature set and bring it into something that's more aimed at the SMB space. So we did this all the way back in 2016. So this will be our what fifth year of uh, offering Nebula services to people. We currently support the ability to manage 61 different products. So Nebula is made up here of a couple different components. There's the cloud portion, which we refer to as Nebula Control Center or NCC for short. And then there's the hardware itself, security gateways, switches, access points, UTM firewalls. And then we've also got a mobile app over here. So the idea behind Nebula is to save you money and save you time. So we'll go through here and sort of explain how we do that on a typical sort of network here. Obviously, you've got to buy your equipment. You've got to install your equipment. So this is one of the first areas where we help speed things up for you by reducing the amount of time it takes. In general, on most networks, there is no local configuration required of the Nebula hardware. You simply need to be able to plug it in. You don't need any sort of uh, standardizing any sort of monitoring equipment. The cloud monitors stuff for you. You don't need to worry about setting up remote access through VPNs or port forwardings. Again, the, the cloud takes care of that automatically for you. The cloud can function as your monitoring platform to let you know when devices go offline and when there's issues. Um, logs, depending on the version of Nebula you're using, can be st automatically stored in the cloud for up to 365 days, so you don't have to worry about storing that information yourself. Updates and firmware changes and stuff like that are all automatically pushed out over the air. And then you've got your user and device management. So let's start going through some of the features here with Nebula. So one of the cool things we can do here is you can start setting up your product without needing to unbox it. At any point, you can log into the Nebula interface, nebula.zycell.com, set up a new customer of yours, start setting up the site, and start configuring things before you even order the hardware. Once you've ordered the hardware um, and you get the product delivered to you, you don't even need to take it out of the box to start configuring it. You simply scan it with a, uh, our app, scan a QR code that can be found on the outside of the box, and assign it to your customer and their site. And that's all you need to do before shipping it on site and plugging it in. So setting up a Nebula network is designed to be super easy. Um, it just takes a couple of minutes to get the basics going. You can go from not having a Nebula account to having a Nebula account with an access point running a captive portal in under five minutes. It's very simple to do. We've got a number of different wizards during the setup process to help speed things along. So in order to use Nebula, there is nothing else you need other than Nebula compatible hardware. So there's no special software, there's no virtual machines you need to run, there's no servers you need to set up, there's no cloud key devices you need to plug in on your network. Every Nebula uh, enabled device will automatically reach out to the cloud and can interface with the cloud directly, no middlemen required. So anywhere you've got an internet connection, you have access to your customers and their networks. So some of the other cool features here included with Nebula is built-in captive portal functionality. So no need to uh, buy an additional license to use captive portal. We have captive portal built in on the gateway. We also have it built in directly on the access point. So if you're just using access points with Nebula, you don't need to worry about captive portal on your gateway if you're not using a Nebula gateway. Um, so we've got the ability to uh, do a captive portal to redirect to a splash page, captive portal redirect to a page you're hosting yourself, the ability to have users log in with a username and password, 
or just log in by agreeing to a terms of service or log in using Facebook. So a lot of flexibility there um, is providing guest access to networks. On the wireless side of things, we, sub we support Smart Mesh. So if you, for whatever reason, can't get a uh, hardwired ethernet connection to all of your APs, no problem. Um, you just enable Smart Mesh and they will be able to find nearby APs that do have a hardwired connection and automatically create a mesh. Um, so you don't need a wired backhaul to all of your APs. Um, we support WPA2 and WPA3 Enterprise. And we support all the industry standards when it comes to roaming, such as 802.11R, KV. On the switch side of things, um, we offer our intelligent PoE technology, the ability to monitor the draw from different devices instead of relying on the standard, which uses um, very broad categories to uh, assign um, power usage. So it allows you to put more devices on the same switch with the same uh, PoE budget. We've got user-friendly ACLs, VLAN configuration, 802.1x authentication, loop guard, DHCP server guard, and the ability to virtually stack your switches. All updates are done over the air, so there's no need to go on site to do firmware updates, to make configuration changes. There's no need to, you know, SSH into the customer's location, set up a VPN tunnel, simply go to nebula.zysl.com come make your changes and they will automatically be pushed out. Same goes with firmware updates. Those can automatically be pushed out based on your scheduled requirements. We've simplified on the gateways how easy it is to set up a site to site VPN it can be done with just a couple of clicks. And Nebula was designed from the ground up to make it easy for you to manage all of your customers in one location. So you don't need to memorize different URLs for each of your customers. You simply go to nebula.zysel.com, log in, and you will be presented a list of your customers. And then you can easily drill down to the individual sites and quickly jump between different customers. So once you've logged in, you've got the ability, if you've got a customer with multiple sites to easily see what's going on on all of those different sites that they may have. And then when you drill down to the individual site, you get this nice little dashboard here, which is customizable as to what information is there to give you an idea of what's going on, how many users are currently on the wireless network, POE utilization versus budget available, where, um, which applications are using bandwidth, which users are using bandwidth. And this is where you'll do all of your configuration and management is from here. So we've got a great view making it easy for you to see all of the connected devices and see what's going on with them. With the most recent Nebula update, we now have the ability to view both wireless and wired clients simultaneously, um, should you do that, or you can drill down into specific types and see a lot more data. So for instance, on the Wi-Fi side of things, if you drill down to Wi-Fi, you can see if they're currently connected or not. You can see which, uh, which SSID they're connected to, which access point they're connected to, signal strength, channel currently being used, all sorts of stuff. And again, you can go in there and customize exactly which data is available for you. You can also search it to help narrow things down. On the switch side of things, we make it really easy for you to see what's going on with your switch ports. You can tell if something's plugged in or not, what speed they're plugged in, and whether or not they're using PoE. And we make it really easy to configure multiple ports simultaneously across multiple devices. So you'll get a list of all of your ports, regardless of which switch they may be on, and you're able to highlight and select which ones you want to configure and then configure it all at once. So just about everything I've talked about up to this point is included with the free version of Nebula. So that's right, Nebula, the core functionality is still free. It does not require a license to be able to use. Now, when you're looking at our products on our price list, you will see some products described as Nebula Flex, some products described as Nebula Flex Pro. So if product is Nebula Flex, it tells you it can be used in one of two modes. It can be used as a traditional networking standalone device, or it can be managed with Nebula. If you see Nebula Flex Pro, same story, can be used standalone or can be used with Nebula Cloud Management. 
Those with Pro, though, will also include one year of Nebula Pro Pack, which unlocks additional features that you can use. And then on top of that, on the access point side of things, Nebula Flex Pro access points offer a third mode, which is the ability to be able to be managed directly with a controller, such as the controller that's built in onto our USG um, security gateways. So here's a list of the products that we've got here. You can see it's a lot of them. I think before I said there's uh, 61 current devices that can be managed with Nebula. So you can see we've got a number of Nebula Flex products here, both on the AP side, the Switch side, and the USG Flex gateways. And then the Nebula Flex Pro is basically any one of our APs that starts with a five or six in the model number. On the Switch side of things, it's the 1350 series, the 2220 series, and the XS3800. And then if you buy a USG Flex that includes UTM, it also includes one year of Nebula Pro Pack. So now let's talk a little bit here about licensing. So there's the free version, which we call the base pack. We have now introduced a new license just recently called the plus pack, which unlocks some of uh, the most common features. And this costs around $12 per device per year. And then we have the pro pack, which we've had since the beginning here. Um, so the pro pack unlocks the biggest amount of our features here. Um, and those go for $30 per device per year. So in the past pro pack, we had different licenses for different classes of products. A switch had a different license than an AP, had a different price. Now everything uses the same license. There is just a pro license, there is just a plus license. It doesn't matter what type of device you're gonna match it up with. One of the other recent changes we've made here is that we now do per device licensing. So if you're going to use Plus or Pro Pack, every device at that customer needs to have a valid license. So if you try to mix and match licenses, every device will function at whatever the lowest level of licensing is for that customer. So if you want to do Pro Pack, every device needs a Pro Pack license. If you want to do Plus Pack, every device needs a Plus license. Now, coming up here towards the end of the year, um, we'll finally have Circle integration into uh, Nebula. So if you haven't seen the uh, PR releases yet, Circle was our new sort of uh, cloud platform for handling licensing. Um, so later this year, it will be integrated into Nebula, and it will give you the ability here um, to simply go into an organization or a customer of yours, choose an expiration date, and then have it sell you the appropriate licenses to make every device on that customer expire at the same time. So um, I won't go fully through this here, but we'll go through some of the differences here between the free version, the plus and the pro pack. So regardless of which one you get, you can manage in the cloud an unlimited number of devices in an unlimited number of customers and an unlimited number of sites. So there is no limitation on any of these as to, far, as to how far that goes. So you're, it's not one of those situations where you can manage two devices and then you've got to buy licenses. No, everything there unlimited. All of the products have the ability to basically automatically reach out to the cloud and uh, automatically download configuration, the ability to push firmware updates out through the cloud, the ability to use our app on either iOS or Android. Now, where we start seeing some of the differences here comes to the logging. So the free version of, of uh, Nebula will store 24 hours worth of user data in the cloud. So that's the behavior, what's going on traffic wise, things like that. So plus pack gets you a full week stored in the cloud and then pro pack gets you a year of that log information stored in the cloud. Um, when it comes to admin accounts, the free version gives you five admin accounts per customer. Plus pack gives you eight, pro pack has no limitations. We also have a cloud authentication database. So for those of you that want to do user authentication, but don't want to use um, and set up your own radius server or something like that. Um, the free version gives you 50 accounts in that database. The plus pack gets you 100 accounts in that database. Pro pack has no limit. It's an unlimited database to use for the user authentication. Now, Base pack here is something called cloud saving mode. So basically the saving part here is it's, it's saving us 
from having to pay a bunch of money to Amazon AWS for storing information in the cloud. So basically, if you don't log into a free version or a free customer of yours, a free organization for 30 days, we will stop collecting user data until you log back in and tell it to start collecting user data again. Now, this only applies to the user type data that you're seeing in the logs, you know, devices that are connected, bandwidth being used. Um, we still keep more than that in the back end when it comes to troubleshooting type logs and information. So from there, um, you'll see here that now PlusPack and ProPack have a number of features that are not available and free. So one of those is advanced firmware scheduling, the ability not only to schedule firmware updates, but schedule them based on the individual device or, or type of device. We get you um, the ability to automatically generate reports on what's going on on the network and have those automatically emailed to yourself or your customer and have you put be able to put your logo information into those email reports. An automatic topology view and we'll show we'll show you what that looks like a little bit later. Um, the ability to get emails and alerts when devices go offline and the ability to use Wi-Fi vouchers. And then ProPack unlocks a whole bunch more stuff here, uh, more functionality and features when it comes to doing captive portal. Um, an audit log, which tracks every configuration change and which admin account made those configuration changes for up to a year. Um, the ability to do uh, VPN scripting, bunch of stuff like that. We've got this documents available on our um, website, which goes over all of this, or you can simply reach out to your salesperson and they can provide you with something like this, which includes all the different features. So you can more easily reference that and try to remember what I just went over here. So we will go through here some of the ProPack features in a little bit more detail, not a lot. Um, so it gives you more granular controls over like per device settings on certain different things here. Um, I believe this is on a per organization basis here that we're talking about here. Um, so more detailed network information and auditing I already talked about before the ability to store up to a year's worth of audit logs in the cloud for you. The ability to use uh, pre-configured templates to more easily um, clone or, or more easily change things that are going on between sites. So you can just change one site. Um, for one of your customers and then automatically apply those changes to additional sites under that customer. On the wireless side of things, again, we're giving you more access to um, some settings here when it comes to wireless controls, such as the ability to uh, access like smart steering um, for users and be able to manually configure things like that. Um, again, more settings when it comes to captive portal. The ability to use machine learning on the wireless side of things to have Nebula automatically make changes to your network um, based on what we're seeing performance wise from clients to try to optimize wireless performance and automatically solve wireless issues that you're dealing with. The ability to use dynamic pre-shared key. So this is where instead of using 8021X, each individual user gets a different pre-shared key, no username same SSID and the login and then VLAN settings and stuff are automatically applied based on the individual PSK. So that allows you to give each user their own PSK and much more easily manage users, what they have access to. And if somebody leaves the company, eliminate their PSK so they no longer have network access. There we go, talking a little bit here about the machine learning and what it does here, how it basically tracks um, performance of each individual client device per AP and is able to make changes here to optimize your wireless network based on the client behavior that we are seeing. And then on the switch side of things, it gives you access to a little bit more features when it comes to the uh, switch configuration, gives you the ability to back up your switch configurations. Um, automate, automate, excuse me, automate VLAN uh, allocation or VLAN settings here. So you can use uh, OUI, for instance. Basically, you look at the first few digits of the MAC address and can then apply a VLAN based on the device's MAC address. Um, if you're using the 1350 switches, the ability to automatically periodically ping connected PoE devices. And if they stop responding, power cycle them to get them to boot back up. And if you're doing IPTV, um, advanced IGMP snooping settings that you can enable, um, as well as dedicated IPTV reports. 
And then on the VPN side of things, um, it makes it easier for you to allow remote users to VPN back into the uh, central gateway. Um, we have the ability to send out a script via email to the users that they simply run the script and it will configure VPN for them. So that works on Windows, Mac, and iOS. Um, some more advanced settings when it comes to VPN technology or topology um, and various alerts for what's going on um, on there. We talked a little bit before about automatic ne network topology. So this is what that looks like. Basically, we automatically map out every device on the network and show what it's connected to to help you with troubleshooting. So that's it for per device licensing. So again, this is the licensing for Nebula Control Center. Each device, if you're using Plus or ProPack, needs to have an active Plus or ProPack license. If a device does not, such as you add a device that doesn't include a license, we give you 15 days to go ahead and add a license to that device. We've also got a new license tier here called an MSP Pack license. So this is not a per device license. This is a per admin user license. So this is a license you would buy to unlock these features. It is tied to the admin account. So every customer of yours that is that also is accessed by this admin has access to these features that we're going to talk about here. So one of the first views, and this was something that used to be available in the free version of Nebula, it is now a, requires this MSP pack license is the MSP view. So this is a special more detailed view that lists all of your customers and gives you a snapshot of what's going on in each of their networks. So if you don't have the MSP pack, you still get a list of all of your customers um, that you can then drill down in and configure them. It just doesn't have all this extra data that this MSP view has. The MSP license also unlocks MSP branding. So before this was a pro pack feature, it's now a MSP license feature. So you can use this functionality on non pro pack organizations. Um, it'll work again with any organization that this admin account has access to. So this gives you the ability to rebrand the Nebula interface to have your logo on it and to replace the Zycel support contact information with your company's contact information. And then we've added some new features here. Um, the first one here is um, it gives you a different way of managing admin accounts and the ability to create teams. So you can much more easily um, add and remove admin accounts in bulk across different customers. Um, and then cross org synchronization, the ability to make a change on one of your customers and then port those changes to additional different customers um, that you are managing through Nebula. And then we have our security licenses. So we've got the Nebula security pack. This is the UTM license you use if you have a NSG security gateway. If you are using one of our USG flex gateways, then you would buy the UTM security pack. So the easy way to remember this is just look at that first letter. NSS, the N is the same as the NSG. The U here on UTM is the same as the USG Flex. So these are different UTM uh, licenses because the feature set that the NSGs and the UTMs have are different. So the UTM, or excuse me, the USG Flex series has a lot more functionality than the NSG series, including in particular here, collaborative detection and response, the ability to coordinate with our access points and provide certain levels of security and security functionality at the AP level to keep bad users from reaching your wired network. And then we've also got the secure Wi-Fi license. So again, these licenses are only if you are using our security gateways, and then only if you want to use and provide UTM functionality or our secure Wi-Fi functionality. So I won't go too in depth on it, but secure Wi-Fi is something that we launched just uh, last month. And it basically turns an, a Zycel access point into a VPN appliance. It's designed primarily for remote workers since a lot more people are working from home today. One of the challenges you run into when it comes to doing uh, remote work is getting access to your company's network resources that's traditionally done via v VPN. So your IT department has to go and then configure each user's um, 
individual computer that they're using at home for VPN, which can sometimes be tricky. Oftentimes the home router doesn't want to co cooperate with your VPN software to pass the traffic through reliably. And then alternately, you can give them a VPN appliance, such as one of our uh, VPN 20s or something like that. But again, one of the challenges you run into is the home user, oftentimes their modem and router are one device provided by their ISP. And they may not have the functionality to pass traffic through to a VPN appliance. They may end up double natting things. It may just be hard to try to figure out how to configure it correctly. So this solves all of those issues. You simply give them an access point, you plug it into whatever their existing router is, and then Nebula will help make sure that, that this uh, access point has a secure NVGRE over IPsec tunnel back to a USG flex. It's located at the company headquarters. It's all managed through Nebula, and they can use the same SSID and the same security settings at home as you would use in the office. So if they're taking a laptop back and forth between the office and between home, it's the exact same wireless setting. So it will seamlessly, when you transition from the office back to home, automatically connect to the SSID and get access to those um, company resources securely. So that's it for today's webinar. Um, if you've liked some of the stuff you've seen here, if you've got some questions and you'd like to try it out yourself, if you don't already have some Nebula hardware, we have a demo that you can use. You simply go to nebula.zycell.com, um, go to log in, and we've got the credentials on the screen. So you can log in and see a multi-site demo that we've got there, play around with a lot of the settings and things like that and see just how Nebula works. In addition, um, you can reach out to your salesperson. If, if you are a registered Zycell partner, um, and you can get yourself a 60 day demo kit to be able to play with. And with that, I'll go ahead and start taking your questions. Um, if you have any questions, send them in using the Q&A interface, question and answer there in Zoom. Um, and then of course, you can always reach out to me directly via my email there, seanr at zicel.com. Um, ask me questions, give me feedback, give me suggestions for other webinars you'd like to see us do here in the future. So anonymous attendee has a question here. And they are asking, when will the Zycell stop splashing the 2.0 screen on login? Um, good question. I believe that currently goes away in June. Um, having a do not show again checkbox absolutely makes sense. I don't know why we don't have one on there. Um, I think there was some concern because of how big some of these changes were that people would just automatically check that, make it go away without actually reading it. Um, I'll definitely pass that feedback on about see what we can do to get that added in there before June. But I believe uh, with the June update, um, that will go away. June is also when we're, we've, you know, been getting your guys feedback on some of the changes to the GUI, um, some of the things, especially when it comes to license management that aren't maybe as easy as they should be. So we are targeting the end of June here for another update, which will add a lot more functionality to make it easier um, and to solve some of those issues that you have brought up with your feedback. Um, in an earlier webinar, I was told the home network has to be a static IP. Is that true? You know what? I don't know the answer to that. Since it's a feature that's part of the USG Flex, I haven't really played around with that. Try or Marcus would better know the answer. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, at least at the moment, if that's true. Um, but again, even if most home users, even if their um, network technically is DHCP, um, my experience is, is that generally, unless there's a power outage or something that causes your router to go offline for a long period of time, generally you get the same public IP over and over again. So while it's technically DHCP from your ISP, um, it generally acts more like a, uh, a static IP, but I don't know the answer to that for sure. Um, you can email me and I can try to find the answer for sure for you or reach out to your salesperson and we can get the answer for that. I do know when it comes from the uh, secure Wi-Fi thing that there are a number of feature enhancements that are planned in the near future here. So I, I know we're, we're continuing to expand the functionality on that. 
Uh, Matt was asking here, can it be an ATP firewall? So no, for right now to use Nebula, um, you have to have either a NSG gateway, which are in the process of being phased out, or a USG flex. The plan is later this year, um, before the year is over, to also allow the ATP series to be managed in Nebula. But for right now, it's just the NSG gateways and the uh, USG flex, which can work in uh, Nebula. Okay, another question here from Anonymous. Um, require, this is again about the secure Wi-Fi, so I may not know the answer here. Are devices connected to the AP LAN part of the VPN? Um, no. Pretty sure the answer to that is no. Um, they must be connected to a SSID. Um, yeah, they, they must be connected to uh, to the SSID and then that is routed over the VPN. If you plug something on those APs that have two ports, um, anything plugged into one of those ethernet ports is just on the LAN. It does not get tunneled over the uh, VPN. So the VPN only works for wireless users who are connected to a defined SSID that's designed to connect back to the uh, office. Um, you're asking is all traffic through the VPN tunnel um, so my understanding is that at the moment, all traffic goes through the VPN. So uh, when you're using this, there will be your SSID for the corporate SSID. You connect to that corporate SSID, all traffic goes to the corporate network. Um, I mentioned a minute ago that we are working on enhancements, and I do believe we are looking to roll out split tunnel at some point in the future, but I don't know when that will be, but I do know that is something that is on the... Uh, the uh, wish list as far as features go and something that they are looking at doing. Um, Willie's asking for the demo credentials. Again, if you just go to the website, the nebula.zicel.com, it should be up on that screen itself. Where you log in, there should be some text, I think, below that, which has the demo credentials, but I, I put them up there on the screen again for you anyway. Um, it's just nebula.zicel.com, and then the password is nebula demo capital N, capital D, no space. And that is it as far as questions go. I will hang out here for another, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. So um, if you're typing something up, I'll hang out here to, to answer if it is coming through. Um, otherwise might be a good idea to uh, copy and paste whatever you're writing there and just email it to me. Again, my email is Sean R. Sean is spelled S-H-A-W-N, the letter R at Zycel.com. Um, and I can just answer you offline. Okay, I'm not seeing anything else coming in. So I'm gonna go ahead and end today's webinar. Thanks for joining us guys. I really appreciate you uh, taking time out of your day to listen to me talk. Um, hopefully we provided some good information for you. And as always, you know, feel free to send me uh, you know, feedback. If you don't want me to know who you are, you set up a Proton email and uh, send it to me that way. Um, but let me know. Again, we're always looking to try to improve these, make these better for you. So what sort of information do you want from us that we aren't giving you? Do you have any ideas for webinars you think would be helpful, more in-depth things, how to set stuff up, best practices? Let us know what you are looking for. Thanks, guys.